morning. Welcome to Mondays in the Psalter. I'm Pastor Vandercook. Today we take a look at Psalm 2, the psalm appointed for the 17th Sunday after Trinity in the historic lectionary. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart, cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his fury and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You can divide this psalm really into kind of three sections as you look at it. In the first part, you have this, um, this idea of why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain, uh, and, and talking about uh, the people that kind of uh, in vain try and um, uh, destroy God's people, try and destroy his son even, if you will, because, of course, this is a prophecy of Christ that's going on in this, uh, in this psalm. So that opening section, it talks about how the, the nations are trying to plot in vain, trying to, to destroy God's people. And then it turns the scene to heaven where you have God looking down. Uh, and you kind of have that visual of these kings down here on earth think they have it all figured out, think they can destroy the people of God and think they can uh, derail the plan that he has for his people. And God then looks down and holds them in derision. And then you have the Lord speaking here. And he laughs. He laughs because their plots are all in vain. He knows what he's going to do. He has all of this in his control. And he, then he speaks to them in his wrath, and he terrifies them in his fury, and he says, I've set my king on Zion, my holy hill. Now, in its immediate context, whenever this psalm is, is written, you're talking about you know, King David and his descendants sitting on the throne there in Jerusalem, there on Zion. But, of course, this is pointing forward to Christ. And you see that most clearly in, in verse 7 of the psalm here. The Lord said to me, you are my son, today I have begot you. That's Jesus, of course. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage. Now, I couldn't help but think of whenever uh, Satan is tempting Jesus in the wilderness, he says to him uh, that if he will only uh, bow down to him, he'll give him all the nations of the earth. And the thing is, Jesus, of course, already has all the nations of the earth, and we see that here in this psalm, that God has already promised him those things. He already has possession of all of that. The ends of the earth will be your possession. Now, you get to verse 9 here. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Uh, that is, the nations, those that would oppose Christ and oppose uh, his word, oppose the word of God. Luther has, has a rather extensive writing on this uh, in, his, um, in his lectures on the Psalms, in his lecture on Psalm 2 here. He talks about this rod. And I'm just going to read you a little bit from what Luther says here. Uh, it is called a rod because it directs, I'm sorry, I should start with, Luther identifies the rod as the Holy Gospel, as the good news of Jesus Christ. It's called a rod because it directs, convicts, reproves, and upholds. But it is called a rod of iron. He specifically talks about it being a rod of iron uh, for a threefold reason. The first is that it is hard and opposed to the flesh, since it points to the cross and martyrdom according to the flesh, to break it to pieces like a potter's vessel. Uh, so you have this idea that uh, the flesh is opposed and it's going to be broken by this rod of iron uh, because it's hard. And then the second reason that it's called a rod of iron, according here to Luther, is that 
it is inflexible and of an invincible straightness, for the gospel could not be twisted into evil by any heretics or corruptors, though many have tried to do so in vain. And then the third reason that it's like iron is that it crushes and crumbles and subdues and shapes all things. So the gospel puts the misshapen in order, that is, it disciplines the undisciplined, it crushes the great, that is, it humbles the proud. You think about how uh, Mary sings the Magnificat. Uh, you have exalted the lowly, you know, uh, the, the, uh, those who are, uh, you know, those who are sitting in those high places are brought low and the humble are exalted. And there you get kind of a tie into this week's gospel reading, where you have Jesus talking about the uh, exalted being humbled and the humble being exalted. And this is exactly what Christ does uh, in his death and resurrection. He is the one who humbles himself and he is the one who is exalted. And because of that, he brings we sinners who are lowly and exalts us to that highest position, giving us the gifts of the cross. And so we have then the Lord speaking all those things. And then at the end of this psalm, we have this warning. O kings, be wise, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in his way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. If you reject this gospel, you will not be saved. That's the bottom line. Uh, and he makes that clear here. But rather, blessed are all who take refuge in him. So this week, take refuge in the Lord's mercy. Take refuge in the one who exalts the lowly. Uh, repent and believe the good news, as Jesus would say. Repent and be uh, baptized. Repent and believe what he has given you in Jesus Christ. So rejoice this day that Christ indeed has come, that he brings this rod of iron, the gospel that, uh, that crushes the exalted and raises you, the sinner, the lowly, and exalts you. God be with you this week. We'll see you next week on Mondays in the Psalter.